afternoon everyone. I hope you had a lovely half term. For today's art lesson, we are going to be focusing on one of the elements of art, value. When we talk about value in art, we are talking about the lightness and darkness of a colour. I'm going to be showing you some shading activities to get you started today. Then, at the end of the video, there will be two tasks to challenge yourselves. There will be worksheets attached to the website, and if not, these are things you can have a go at drawing yourselves as we go. We are going to start off today's lesson by drawing a value scale, so let's begin. So I am going to start by showing you how to draw a simple value scale, and this is something you can have a go at yourselves, you can create your own grid, or I have attached a worksheet to the school website and you can download and print off. I am going to start with the darkest end of my value scale, so I'm going to press down with my pencil to create the darkest mark in the first box. I'm then going to gradually ease pressure and we will get lighter and lighter in each box. You may also like to have a practice of this with a colouring pencil instead. For the next scale I am going to use lines to show you the value of white and black. White is the highest value in art and black is the lowest. For this next value scale you could use some patterns. I decided to draw simple lines. You could do this with a ruler or freehand. I started in the middle and then I began to put my lines closer together to get darker and then spread them out to get lighter. You could try this with your own pattern or design. You could try circles, lines like I've done, cross hatching, it is up to you. When you finish, you'll be able to see that both of our scales go from light to dark. For this warm up activity, grab yourself some paper and some pencils. You could use a colouring pencil if you'd like to and have a go practicing easing that pressure going from dark to light. Start by pressing down really hard and then get lighter and lighter. This doesn't have to be really neat, it's just about getting used to the feeling and you could try with some lines or patterns. Then when you are happy going from dark to light, have a swap around and have a go, pressing really lightly to start with and gradually pushing down harder to get darker marks. Now we've been practicing our dark and light marks, this is something we can apply to our drawings. The lighter our lines, the easier they can be to change or if we make a mistake, rub them out. As you can see here, the dark line leaves a mark and the lighter one disappears. We are going to have a practice shading using some shapes but our first step is going to be drawing our outlines. We are going to draw a cylinder, a cone, a circle or sphere, and finally a cube. You can follow along with me and draw these yourselves, or you could print out the worksheet on the website and have a go shading them in. You could also draw your own shapes if you'd prefer, and as always, if I'm going a bit too fast, you can pause the video to catch up. As we are just getting started, we are going to use lines so that it is easier to see and help us break up the sections, just like on our value scale at the beginning. After more practice, you'll be able to have a go blending without these lines. So we're going to break our shapes up into four sections and leave the cube as it is. For the sphere, you're going to add a highlight and three lines. Before we begin shading, we need to have a think about which areas will be light and dark. When a light hits an object, it's going to have higher value and it's going to be lighter and then shadows will create a lower value, making it dark. The darkest section will be the furthest away from the light, just like here on the cylinder. You will work your way towards the light source getting lighter and lighter. Or you might like to start with the lightest section first and work your way and get darker and darker. You may also like to experiment and change which direction your light source might be coming from. Remembering that the lightest section will be closest to the light and the darkest the furthest away. We are going to continue this process for the rest of the shapes. For 
For the sphere, we are going to gradually get lighter, but keeping in mind that we have drawn our highlight at the top and we are going to keep this section completely white. When we draw value, it helps make all of our shapes look three dimensional. The cube is slightly different as we did not draw the lines to break it up into four but as you can see we already have three clear sections so we can use three shades to colour it in, a dark, a medium and then finally on top our lightest value and closest to our light source we are going to either leave white or colour it in very faintly. For our final steps, we are going to add shadows to our shapes. It is important to remember where our light is coming from and your shadow will always be the darkest colour. Because light travels in a straight line, the shape of the shadow will most often be the same as the outline shape of your object. So for my cone, I have kept my shadow looking triangular. Continue to do this for the rest of your shapes. Here is a quick demonstration of how you could shade and blend in your object without using lines to separate. Remembering to change your pressure as you go from light to dark or dark to light. With a bit of practice you'll all be able to do this in no time. If you're feeling comfortable with shading you can have a go at one of the activities that I'm going to show you next and have fun. For the first activity, you are going to start off with a simple 4x4 grid. Again, you can have a go drawing this yourselves or I will leave it as a worksheet on the school website. The next step is to divide those four sections in half to create eight triangles in total. We are then going to, you guessed it, shade in each section. I'm going to start off by going dark to light from the outside of the square. I'm then going to move on to the next section. This time we are going to work from the inside out. And again, I am choosing to work from dark to light, but you may choose to do the lightest part first and work your way in. Just make sure you are doing the opposite to the section before. You may find it helps to turn the paper as you go as it does make it a little easier to color in each section. You are going to carry on this technique all the way around, so going from light to dark and dark to light. Once you have finished colouring and shading all your sections, it should hopefully look a little something like this. You could add even more depth to your image by layering colours. You are going to follow the exact same techniques as before, but this time using a lighter colour over the top, just like I've done here with the orange. Even though this activity is aimed at years four, five and six, any one of you can have a go at this activity. Again, we are going to start off with a grid. This time I am using a four by three. This will also be available on the worksheets. The next step is to divide up the grid into smaller sections. 
I'm going to take a ruler and draw a couple of diagonal lines. You can place yours where you would like. I am then going to use some curved lines to create some more unusual shapes. Keep going until you are happy, but remember we don't want to make the sections too small as we are going to be shading them in. The next step is to shade in each section created by your lines, practicing those blends going from dark to light or light to dark. The trick is to change the direction of your shading in each section. You may also work from top to bottom or from side to side. Just make sure that each section is different. So for the first section, I worked from left to right, going dark to light. And then for the next section, I worked from the top to the bottom, going from dark to light. So I keep changing in each section. This activity will take a little bit of time, but if you keep going, it should turn out a little something like this. If you end up maybe pressing a little bit too hard in an area, or you would like your lighter sections to stand out even more, you can go back in with a rubber. 